Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now today I'm going to do a special painting today for a street scene. But I want to take you, first of all, let's talk about, I'm broadcasting from Chesapeake, Virginia, and broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. So all you users out there, I hope you see what I'm doing and give me some comments and some questions. And get back to me how you like the program. And give me some suggestions, what you'd like to see. And uh, I'll be glad to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, my wife, Gloria, is in the studio with me today. She's uh, checking the messages and keeping the track of the uh, broadcast. So let me uh, let me uh, show you something here special. Um, I've got uh, on my overhead, I'm going to take you to my browser page. Now there, there is a street scene. Now that's the photograph. That's that's my reference photograph you see right there. But if you'll notice, uh, it's a one point perspective. Now when I say one point perspective, what you do, I work backwards and I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna show you, I turned this uh, photograph into a line drawing uh, on Photoshop here. And there's a line drawing, it just shows you the basic shapes there. But what I can do now is I can draw a line if you look at the top left, the line from the way the way the, uh, the edges of the building go down down to a point, and look at the left side again, uh, the edges of the windows also go down to the same point. And one more, the bottom edge of the buildings, all the way across, take you to the same point. Now, if you go, if I go on the right side. The bottom right side uh, shows the, all, all, they all come and express from the same point. And I'll take a couple more. I've got the, the top right, the top of the buildings also go to the same point. You know, just to clean it up here, the edges of the windows, so you can see the one point's perspective. What it means is that all these lines that are parallel, and this happens to be a flat surface, a flat street, it works on a flat surface very well. All the lines that are parallel, all will meet at one point in the, in the, on the horizon. So the horizon line is right there where those points intersect. And from there, the points radiate out toward the foreground. That shows you the depth uh, in a, as far as perspective is concerned. Okay, let me take you back to the, the main camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use those lines of perspective, and I'll show you how I, uh, how I started my uh, painting and uh, how I developed that. So let's go to my painting table and uh, let me get started. Turning on the overhead though. On the overhead picture here. So what I did, uh, this is my reference photograph that I showed there a few minutes ago, uh, lines of perspective. What I've done is I've also, uh, I've, uh, I've also got a, another picture. This is a picture of a, of a building in the background. So I've added that to my composition here in the background. And so my, my design sketch, which I always do in every, every painting I do, uh, I put that building here in the background and I've added a few pictures, features. I've added a car here, and I've added some figures here on the, on the streetway. So you can see this. I've added a car here in the foreground. And I've added, these cars are still here from the original photograph. And I've added some figures here on the, uh, here in the, in the background, and here also here in the, in the midground. And so my, uh, my drawing, my design drawing starts out with a, uh, My drawing drawing goes starts out in the horizon, and that's where the that's where the vanishing point is. That's uh, one point perspective. There's one vanishing point, and that's the point where all the all the line all the lines intersect. All the lines intersect here at this vanishing point right here. 
So this is where I'm starting. Now, uh, you start from the vanishing point. From there, you draw out the lines from the vanishing point on those intersections that I showed you on the uh, uh, the Photoshop uh, diagram that I showed you uh, originally. All these points were all drawn from the vanishing point. So once you find the vanishing point, then it's action necessary. Oh, it's, it's going back on now. Okay, it came back on. You have a little uh, technical difficulty here. I see the... Uh, the signal is now is being broadcasted. So uh, the first part, uh, as a review, uh, I was showing here. I was showing here that once once you find the vanishing point, <clears throat> then you find the lines that go out to the different parts of the drawing. And that's how you that's how you would compose the drawing from a vanishing point. Now I've added some other features here. I've added that building which I showed initially. Taking this building here and added it to the background, and I've added a vehicle here on the foreground. Now, when I go, when you draw a vehicle, vehicles are pretty simple. Uh, you start with a what I start. I start with a box, and from that box, uh, I also uh, get the angle, the angle that's going to go. So that angle I have there, uh, pretty well have the angle that the car is going to maintain. So then I draw the the forward part of that box. Here's the idea. Here's the idea. Here's the box right here. Then the forward edge, and then the side edge, and then the, the wheels and so forth. So that's basically it. Once you draw, once you draw your box, your three-dimensional box, then you fill in the, the details of the actual subjects. Here, the box starts here, and then you add in the uh, the top, the sides, and then the wheels. And that's about all you need to do to to define a, a to draw in a, a an automobile in your drawing or on your painting, so that's how I did that. There's an example of a box. Here's a, here's one over here. I, I do it. I had one facing this way. I had one facing this way. So you get an idea. You can change the angle of the vehicle depending on what direction you're facing or what direction the angle is facing. Here's one this way and. Here's another box facing this way. That gives you an idea of how to make a sketch to add a, a, a vehicle like this uh, to a uh, painting. Okay, so then I drew my, uh, then I drew up my my plan onto uh, a quarter sheet of Gemini watercolor paper, 140 pound Gemini, which is archival, 100% uh, cotton. And uh, I drew the I, I from the from the vanishing point. I drew in the lines I wanted, and then I also added in the figure, and I added in the uh, uh, the the auto the car here in the street. So I'll give you a close up of that. So that's the that's the finished drawing that I did. Okay, let's go over some of my tools that I'm going to be using today. Uh, my palette, I'm going to use a lot of colors today. I'm going to use, uh, uh, in the sky, I'm going to use ultramarine and yellow ochre in the sky. I'm going to have a blue sky with a little bit of yellow in it, a little bit of uh, warm, warming color. And then in the actual uh, buildings, I'm going to use uh, a lot of color. Uh, yellow lemon, which is right here. Yellow lemon on the bottom here. Uh, ultramarine blue is up here. Yellow ochre is right here. Uh, alizarin crimson up here, burnt sienna down here at the bottom. Then I have yellow orange, which is right here. And Payne's gray over here in the corner. You don't see, you don't see it in the, in, in the picture, but it's up here in the corner. Payne's gray I have over here. Then uh, opera, which is in this corner over here. It's a, a pink or a, a light rosy color. Then I have peacock blue right here. And then hooker's green is up in this corner over here. In my far right bottom corner over here, Hooker's Green. Okay, so it's going to be a, a colorful painting, but then I'm going to be putting in some uh, shadows in it, so it'll cover up very quickly. In my brushes, I'm going to use the hate brush, the brand new hate brush I have. This is the uh, small brush. It's about an inch and three quarters wide. Uh, this is a hate brush. I'm also going to use the, the large hate brush 
which is about two and a quarter inches wide. And these are both on my website. These are brand new brushes I've been using in the last couple of weeks in my paintings. Hake, H-A-K-E, Hake brush. It's uh, made of uh, natural hair, uh, goat hair, but it holds a lot of water and a lot of paint. And it's very, very nice to cover a large area, which is what I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm, using a natural, I'm using a natural hair brush from Silver Brush, which is uh, the black velvet. This is a number eight round. And that gives me a lot of uh, control over the, uh, with a sharp point, I can do a, lot, a little bit of detail on some of the uh, detail on the painting. And then uh, my uh, Holbein number, uh, my Holbein three quarter inch flat, I'm gonna use that to uh, add in a lot of the colors here that I'm gonna add. I, most of the colors I add will use the, the three quarter inch brush. I may use the rigger and some other brushes uh, as I get down the road, but that's, this is start me out uh, to get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sky. So I'm going to uh, use the large hake, and I'm going to wet the sky area up here. This is the sky area behind the buildings. So this hake really works. I, I get a nice load of water or paint or whatever, and it really covers the space really quickly. Then I'm going to uh, use a damp brush here now. And uh, I use a towel to take out the excess water. Do you have the question um, on what paint you use from Cooper? Okay. Uh, the brand of paint I use is uh, Holbein. Holbein Artist Watercolor Paints. And I went over the colors. Uh, I showed the colors that I have here on my palette. These are about, I'm using about uh, 10 of my 15 colors I have on my palette. But those are Holbein uh, Artist watercolors and they're on my website everswatercolors.com and uh, I'm putting out I'm putting out a short video uh, about two, two or three times a week to introduce all the colors that I have there's 108 colors that are available and I have about 18 colors here in my palette and I'll be using more colors down the road but this is just a starting point this is my basic palette right now I'm going to start out by putting a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and this is in the sky I'm going to warm up a little bit of the area down here just a little bit at the bottom And that just gives a little warmth in the sky. Uh, uh, the blue, uh, the blue will cover most of that. And now I'm going to mix up a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue using the hake. And I'm going to go right into the sky area. Cooper said that's awesome. Her son gave her a box of watercolors. Oh, great! Holbein. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, the Holbein. Uh, no, I don't see. Any. I'm sorry. Don't see the question there. Well, Gloria's telling me questions and uh, it's not showing up on my screen. So it must be coming from. Uh, it'll show up on my remarks and I'll get back to you uh, with any questions you may have. OK, all right. That's just that's just a real simple sky, a little bit of blue with a little bit of yellow in it and a little dry. So let me get started on the rest. And I think what I'll do, I think I'll dry that because I don't want to run into it. So I'm going to use the hair dryer. Uh, was that a question about uh, the count, how to use the paints, or was there a question on that? Was it just what the brand was? Did I, did I answer the question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been using Holbrine for probably about 15 years, and it's uh, to me, it's uh, a very good paint. Uh, high quality, has a lot, has a lot of color to it. And let's see, what I want to do now is I'm going to uh, wet the buildings now. So over here, I'm going to start on the left. And I'm going to use the large hake with just clean water. Uh, putting the water down, uh, it's a wet on wet technique, but it, it, what it does, it gets the, uh, the paint to flow very, very nicely, very quickly. 
So I'm gonna wet the paper, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go across basically to the whole painting here, except for the sky. So uh, here I'm using a large hake brush. Wet the paper, and I'm just making it nice and moist. Let the water soak in a little bit so that uh, the paint will flow very quickly. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is this is going to be a, a street scene, and uh, uh, you know, street scenes are not that hard, not that difficult, but you know, you want to make them, I'm going to make them colorful and more interesting. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some color. This is going to, I'm going to start out with uh, a lemon yellow. I'm going to start over here in this building here, and I'm using the uh, three quarter inch flat. Uh, Holbein brush. And uh, I may switch to the hay because I need to get a little bit faster. Uh, and you can see how that hay really covers, a, really covers the area very quickly. So I'll start out here with this little bit of lemon yellow. I'm going to make these colors really bright at this point. Uh, at this point. That's just to get a base coat down, okay? And I may, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Just what I do, just put a little yellow ochre to get a little variety in there. Okay. And now I'm going to mix up a little bit of that uh, alyssum crimson. Oh, that's a really dark red, a really rich, rich dark red. And I'm going to put that right next to this yellow building. Because oh, it's it's not that this is going to be a lot of contrast, but I just want, I want color in here. You'll notice that most buildings. In the cities have different colors uh, and this is what i'm trying to come up with is uh, a design that has a little interest and now i'm going to add a little bit of a, a little bit of burnt sienna to that to uh, give it a little bit of change the color just a little bit when you put one color in, it kind of takes over so what i do is i go in and i put in another color on top of it while it's still wet and let it blend a little bit Okay, now the next color I'm going to use, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of yellow orange in there. It's no, it's yellow deep, and it wasn't on my original list, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in anyway. A little bit of yellow deep, it gives another color. And all I'm basically doing, I'm blocking in, I'm blocking in these colors is all I'm basically doing, and that's all I really want to accomplish is to block in the basic colors. Now I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, uh, yellow lemon again. Wash out the brush. And I'm mixing the colors as I go. I'm mixing uh, the yellows in with the oranges, uh, just to give a little colorful background. Uh, a little base color. And... Uh, all the other areas will be in shadow, so it really doesn't uh, doesn't matter how you put them in. Let's see. I'm going to turn off uh, I'll put a little bit of blue in here, a little bit of dull blue. That's a little bit of uh, that orange mixed in with uh, burnt sienna, or with the excuse me, with ultramarine blue. That'll give me a brown brownish color, a little bit of purple in it. As I move on down, I'm going to Put some more color in there. That's a little bit of that uh, orange mixed in with a red. And uh, I guess I've got one more, one more little color in there. And I'll, put, I'll wind up here at the end. I'm going to put the uh, opera, a little bit of opera down here at the bottom. Just, just a, a, a bright color. But I want this area down here is my impact area. So what I want to do is put some bright colors down there just to show off the impact area. Okay. And I'll take I'll take some of that yellow and put it over here. Kind of get this mix this color up just a little bit over here. Now on the right side I'm going to start out with a little bit of uh, uh, 
instead of yellow, I'm going to start a little bit of yellow orange over here. And I think I'll take a hate bush. It's a little bit bigger, covers a lot more area. It'll be a light color right now, a little bit of orange. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of burnt sienna now, a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I want a darker color here. A little blue. This is going to wind up being a, an abstract painting because I'm not really worried about a lot of detail. I'm not really worried about a lot of perfection. I just want to get the interest of the street scene and uh, an impression of the street with what's going on, the buildings, the color, and a little bit of the shapes and so forth. So I don't worry too worried about the the actual subjects here. Just going to make it look as interesting as I can. And right now, I'm just kind of playing with the colors. And that's the best thing. A uh, nice best thing about watercolors is just just uh, uh, just load your brush up with a color, and don't worry don't worry about uh, the accuracy of exactly what you're doing. It's more fun with uh, what I feel is the uh, the brushwork and what's happening on the paper. You see the you see the paint running. Uh, you see it making a all kinds of uh, changes and so forth, and that's what you want to see. So I'm making this building on the right here a little bit darker on purpose because it's a little more in shadow. So I'm making this a little bit darker over here. I'm going to mix a little more blue in this side over here, darken it up just a little bit. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now, I've wet, I've wet this bottom paper. I'll have to re-wet it just a little bit because it dries out uh, a little bit. So I'm going to re-wet the bottom just a little bit more. We wet the bottom. Then I'm going to take the uh, hake brush. I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, to make a gray color. Maybe just a touch of just a touch of a uh, Payne's gray. The paint, what Payne's gray does, it, uh, if it's too much of it, it turns black. But a little bit of it will tone the color down. It'll darken it up a little bit, and that's what I want. I want a dark, a darker gray at this point. A little bit of blue in it. And uh, what I'll do here is I'll take a test sheet. Yeah, that gives me a that gives me a nice gray. And so what I'll do here is I'll put this on the bottom. I'll put this on the bottom. This is the color that's going to be on the roadway. Then on the sidewalks. Okay. And I think I'll get I have to get a little bit of dry. This. I take the tissue to lift up a little bit of that color to make it a little lighter. In the foreground here, I take the tissue. It's still it's paint's still a little damp, so I'll lay it down and do just a little lifting here. Take off some of that paint to make it just. I just want a nice light 
gray there. I'm going to put a shadow in there anyway, so I want that. And then I think I'll add some a little bit of detail to the, the background here. So I'm going to put uh, a little bit of, um, I'm going to use a little bit of the peacock blue. Yeah. This, this will contrast very nicely with the, the building. I, <clears throat> I got the building here. This building has some architecture, it has some windows, and it has a clock at the top and some steeple, a little steeple at the top and so forth. So it's a very interesting little building. But I'm just going to simplify that and just get enough of it to uh, define uh, the shape of it. So I'm going to go around and just give a little bit of, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit of uh, opera in here also. I'm making opera in the peacock blue. Give me a very colorful. This is the impact here, so this will be the most colorful part of the painting. So it doesn't really much uh, to me. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just going to make it uh, darker than the sky, so it shows up. And really, it's just going to be the outline of a building. And that's all I want to show is the outline of a building, not not necessary details. It, the point is, if it uh, if it looks like a building, it, it's a building. It just make it give it enough definition. And that's just I'm just blocking that part, and I may go back and put a little more detail. But right now, I just get enough definition there to get started. Okay. Now, before I put the cars in, I think I'm going to do some more shadows here. So I'm going to take the uh, the hate brush. And I'm going to make a, a large puddle of gray or shadow. And it's going to be a mixture of uh, ultramarine, burnt sienna, a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. And a little bit of conocanum uh, violet, a little bit of violet, a little bit of red. And I give a little purple, give a little purple, a little warm, a little warmth to it. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to put this area in shadow. Because the street the street is not lit up by, by the sun, so it's going to be in shadow. So I'm going to go over all this color with a, a shadow color. Now some of it, when it dries, it's amazing. When the, when, the, when the paint dries, some of this color is going to show through. And that's, that's what most people don't uh, know about watercolor, is you can layer a color on top of another color. And when it dries, the, the original color will show through. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking those colors that I put down. Now I'm putting another color on top. But if I just make a nice light glaze, and I'm glazing now. I'm glazing this gray over top of these colors I put down. And then you'll still, when it dries, you'll see the, you'll still see the colors underneath. And it's in shadow, so it will, it will indicate, it will show that the, the buildings or features that will be there, and the color will be there, but it will just won't be as defined because it's in shadow. Now here at the end, there's a little more light, so I'm going to leave the end. Uh, portion of this building structure. I'm going to leave it the way I had it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here on the right. I'm going to go in and put a shadow pattern. So that's why in some cases it doesn't really matter what color you put down originally. You just put down a color and then you can go back and go over it with another color. And you'll get a combination. 
you'll get a mixture of whatever colors mixed together on top. That's how one way of mixing a color is to layer. Layer one color on top of another to give you another uh, give you a third color. Okay. Let me give it that a little bit of dry. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something here. And this, every time I do a painting, there's, there's always a little bit of experimentation going on. So I, I want to experiment with some things that I've tried. And here I'm picking up some of that, a little bit of that uh, shadow color I put down. And I want to get a little texture in some of these buildings. So what I'm doing is just kind of picking up some of that color, letting some of the original color show through, and uh, get some texture in the buildings. A little bit of uh, take a little tissue and then you can go around and you can pick up some of that wet paint. It's still a little bit damp and we'll dry it some more. Okay, now I'm going to add in some of the details. Now is the time now when uh, after the paint's down and starts to dry, is the time to put in some detail. So here's where I'm going to add in the uh, the vehicles. This was uh, these are parked vehicles down here at the end of the road, end of the street. And I always start with putting the uh, the windows in and the tires. I'm using a little bit of Payne's Gray now. Mixed, uh, Payne's Gray mixed in with a little bit of uh, Ultramarine Blue. Uh, I just want a dark color because this, uh, this will show up better. Okay, let me get that started. And over, there's one over here, a little bit of blue now. A little, use a bit of Ultramarine Blue. And... Uh, what I do when I do a, when I do a car or an automobile, I, o I always tone tone in the uh, the windows the tone because they're usually tinted or they're a little bit darker than the rest of the car. So I start with the uh, the windows and I put then I put the tires in the wheels and that kind of establishes the shape. That I'm looking for and let that dry a little bit. And I got a couple of figures here I want to put in. There's a there's a figure back here in the roadway. Figures are pretty easy. I just uh, it's just a, again an indication. Uh, really, the size is really important. Uh, I'm 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 el I'm estimating the size of the figure compared to the size of the car. So really. These figures are down here by these cars, so it's easy to judge how big you want to make the figures. So I'm, I'm estimating them to be just a little bit 
just about at the top of the car, a little bit, just a little bit higher. But that gives me a, a real good estimate of how big that figure should be standing there in the, in the roadway. Now this figure over here on the sidewalk will be a little larger because they're, they're a little bit closer. But there's some cars here, but I'm using this estimate here. Using the estimate of the car and the position on the, on the sidewalk. And have show show the arm a little bit of arms out here this time little arms, walking along the high walking along the sidewalk. Okay, then um, all I'm going to do now with the uh, the windows and so forth is just take a just take my three quarter inch flat brush, and I'm just going to indicate the doorways and windows. There's a doorway here. And all I have to do is kind of, uh, and I'm not going to paint the whole doorway and just paint enough of it in to show uh, a little bit of shape. Um, and there's a doorway, doorway. This doorway goes all the way up. Let's see. I better check my picture. Let's see this one here. Yeah, this doorway goes. Yeah, this is a tall doorway. So it goes this is a, all the way up to here. I'm checking back with my, my design. Checking back with my design. This went this doorway here and this doorway here. I'm checking the size. Uh I have I can still see my uh even though I put all that paint down there in the layers, I can still see the drawing underneath. And uh, it's not that it has to be that dark, but you can still see the lines for reference. And just see enough of it in order to put it down. Okay, that's all you really need. So I'm going to put a little more of this in there. There's another doorway over here. And I'm just going to uh, very quickly... Uh, this is just an impression, so just an impression of a doorway over here. There may be some uh, light shining on it, uh, or a little bit of glistening off of windows. Uh, <clears throat> now there's doorways over here on this side, uh, and these are really quick. I'm going to put these in really quick. These have got arches on them, but it's just a different shape. I'm going to put a couple of these in just to have interest over here. And this is where you take your time and uh, as you build your painting, you take a take your brush or your brushwork and then you just take your time to put this detail in. But I'm going to put enough detail here just to indicate some of the features here of these buildings. These were windows that were uh, on the side and they're in they're in perspective so each window now even though they're equal size as they go back toward the impact back toward the focal point they get smaller so that's that's the that's the part of the impression you have of the uh, up here I got a couple windows so I'll stick those in And I'll put in one more, one more doorway over here. Just a, just a, just a hint of a doorway. There's a doorway up back here. Another window. And there's a. Uh, There's kind of an edge. There's kind of an edge to this building here, which I'll put that in. Just kind of indicate this one, and it goes off at an angle. It's kind of a trim on the building. The trim on the building comes at an angle. So again, that's in perspective. It's at a steep angle. The higher up you get, it get the angle gets steeper. Might be a window or something up there. 
And over here, I'm going to put another. I'm going to put another couple windows in. So I'm going to uh, pick up some uh, some blue, and I'm going to put in a, a couple windows up here. Let me see this one here. And these are in perspective, so as you go, if you go forward, they uh, they angle a pretty sharp angle, and they get they get a little bit smaller. But they uh, the important thing is perspective. It, it gives the impression of depth when you show the angle. And there's a window right here too. I'll put this in. This one here is got an angle on it. Now this one here, I've uh, got a little sign, i got a little sign here that's hanging out outside of this doorway here, or store, storefront. There's a sign hanging here, and it's got a, uh, a, a long pole that it hangs off of, so I'm going to put that in. Again, that gives me a little, a little detail. I'll use a smaller brush to get that angle. It, uh, it's hanging off here. Um, it actually has couple hangers here and then it has a little a little fancy uh curly cue in the design I'll put that in just to just to give a hint of what it looks like there's a sign hanging off there there's another sign here on this building I'll put that in there's a sign here There's a sign down here on this building. Now, as you go back and look at your painting, what I'm doing now, I just kind of you clean up the edges a little bit uh, to make them a little a little more defined. And uh, as we go along, there's uh, there's windows, windows and doorways. And they just, they just add a little interest to the to the scene. Uh, there's a couple windows up here. I guess I'm just putting these in now. And again, you take your time to put these in. I'm just really as an ab. This is really abstract, real quick to give the impression. And you can always go back in later and add more, more detail as the painting as the painting develops. Uh, There's all kinds of there's all kinds of uh, detail on these buildings, so you really are trying to minimize, trying to minimize how much uh, detail to put in. And I'm over here. There's a step out. There's steps out here in front of this doorway. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put a little color, not color, but just a little more. A little more color, but uh, you make make this a blue car, I guess. We're gonna make this a blue car. So I'll come down here and I'll, I'll keep it dark, and I'll, I'll leave the I'll leave the bumper on. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the top showing because it's got, uh, I think, a ref not a reflection, but it'll have a little, a little uh, maybe a little highlight on the top of the car as a shine. So we'll leave that white for right now. I think that that'll be fine. Um, later, if I had covered it up, I could use a little bit of white paint to, to bring up a highlight. But as long as I have uh, the white paper, I'll just leave it white for right now. So I have a, I have a choice there of painting it over. And coming back and adding a highlight or paint around it and make the highlight the white paper. And I think I'll just leave the white paper. Uh, and I'm going to, I'll show you one more little thing here, one more little detail.
okay and these cars back here I'm just gonna make them a dark a dark color also these will be uh, this one here it's kind of a I, I mix a little bit of burnt sienna with that blue make a make it a dark brown make this a dark brown car because because I wanted to uh, take away the white paper is what I'm doing And another 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 dark blue car behind that. Okay. Now to finish off the building a little bit, I think I'll I think I'll put a little bit of a burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna here. There is there is some bricks. This is a this has got some brick building. It got bricks in the building, so I'm gonna a little bit of burnt sienna. And just to give a little bit of detail, a little bit of shadow, put a little bit of blue in there for shadows. Doors and windows. I'm going to leave this white paper. It could be the sun shining a little bit on this end of the of the painting that's lighting up the street. And the last thing I'll do is adding a little bit of shadow uh, for the uh, vehicles here. So I've got uh, a shadow color. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue mixed in a little bit of cornacinone or a little bit of alizarin crimson. Make, give me a purple, a purple color, and a little a touch of uh, burnt sienna. And it gives me uh, a little more blue. Always, always test out the colors before we put it down. It's always a good idea. So I'm going to push the thing about cars now is the best thing to do is to put a shadow underneath the wheel so it looks, it makes a little more sense. And, uh, and the re reflections or the shadows will come straight down. And the people would have a little bit of shadow. And this last one down here. Okay. I want to make this a, a real quick study here on uh, a, sea, a street scene. And uh, these can be a lot of fun. I've been, I, I enjoy doing. I take a lot more time to do this, but I just wanted to get uh, out the impression of a street scene and how you would handle it with the uh, perspective, getting the one one line perspective, and then going from there, and then put a little shadow here with this car. You kind of make the shadows up as you go. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. No. Uh, uh, there's no perfect uh, example of this. Now, what I want to do now is put a little, put a little more definition on these on the street here. It's a sidewalk. So this would be the edge of a sidewalk coming down here, where the cars are parked and where the where the pedestrians are walking along. And there's going to be a little sidewalk over here. I'll, I'll make a line here. A little edge. And notice everything, all the perspective lines all go back to the that one point. It all goes back to that one point, which is the one point perspective. So you go back that way, and then you can always start from there. Okay. Okay, that is an impression. I, I there's a, a lot more I could add to this, a lot more detail, make it more realistic. I could add more more detail on the buildings and, and more detail on everything else. 
but for right now, uh, as an impression, uh, as a starting point here, uh, this is how you would approach a, a cityscape to make a scene uh, of, a, of a street scene. So let's go back to my main uh, camera. Let me, uh, let me turn out that light. Uh, that light always gets a little glare on my face and so forth. Uh, okay, well that, that concludes the painting for today. Uh, again, it was just a starting point. Right now, is that is at the impressionistic level. Uh, I think the number one thing was to show you how to construct the street scene from a, a one-point perspective. On a flat surface, one-point perspective is the best way to handle it. If it was a, a hill or something, you'd have to have a different uh, point of view. But still, it's the same principles involved of, of drawing the perspective lines to get the uh, the shape and the angles of the uh, of the buildings and and people or other, or other items on on the street. Uh, the colors are, are up to each individual. To, uh, I use the colors from the photograph, but then uh, I think it's more important to uh, express how you feel about the scene and just make up your own colors. Uh, and then add in the shadows and the details and so forth, as you see. So that's my uh, uh, perspective for today. Uh, the tip was really to draw. When you do a street scene like this or any other scene, look for your lines of perspective. Find your vanishing point. If it's a one point perspective, all the vanishing points will come to that one point. Uh, if you have two, if you're at an angle to it, you might have a two point perspective, which is that come from the left and the right. In this case, uh, we, we have a one point perspective where everything goes to that one point. And that is, that's where you start from when you do your drawing and do your sketch and to do the painting. So my tip today is uh, learn, learn how to do a one point perspective and you make your, your paintings and your drawings uh, more realistic. because it look like the depth uh, of what you're looking at. So uh, I'll be back again next week. Uh, this will be the, uh, January 27th, next Thursday at 2 o'clock. And I'll see you then.